Judge Al Capone, a notorious mob boss. He was successful of organizing crimes, bootlegging, racketeering, gambling, prostitution, and numerous acts of violence, mostly against rival gangsters. He was born into poverty, and no one could have predicted that one day he would become a wealthy and influential gang leader. Born in Brooklyn, New York, to an Italian immigrant family, Capone learned how to hustle and survive in a crowded, rat infested environment as a child. In search of a better life and an American dream, his mother works as a seamstress and his father as a barber. Even as a child, Capone portrayed himself as a heroic Robin Hood-like figure who organized a youngster gang to capture and beat young thieves. He quit going to school after being expelled at the age of 14 for punching his teacher. From a young age, he has worked numerous side jobs to support his family. He has also joined street gangs and became a member of the powerful Five Points Gang in New York. Capone worked multiple jobs such as bookbinder and cutter, pinboy at a bowling alley, bartender, laborer at the ammunition industry, and being a dishwasher. While being a bouncer at Harvard Inn, Al Capone had a crush on a lady whose brother was a powerful mobster. As conflict erupted, the girl's brother attempted to slit Capone's throat, but instead he slashed his cheek, earning Capone the infamous nickname being the Scarface. However, Al Capone made a huge mistake dealing with the mob, so he needs to get Lilo and Frank Yale, the boss of Capone at the bar, ordered him to go to Chicago and work for Johnny Torrio. Capone married May Josephine Coughlin at the age of 19 and became a father. In order to better support his family, he moved his family to Chicago so that he could begin his new job with the mobster John Torrio. Capone was a street smart and experienced in bookkeeping, and Torrio saw his potentials. The Prohibition Law, which forbade the production, sale, and transit of alcohol, was enacted by the United States in 1920. As a result, there was a large black market for the alcohol. Capone and Torrio quickly recognized this chance to make money from it. Capone began to study Torrio of running organizing crimes, and they became a powerful mobster of Chicago outfit. Torrio was shot multiple times as he was leaving a shopping excursion. He eventually quit after his recovery and turned the lead over to Capone at the age of 26. Torrio advised Capone to stay low-key of the activities. Capone's personality, showing generosity to the people, his Robin Hood mannerisms attracts the media. Capone began to live in a lavishly luxurious life. Capone rose to become one of Chicago's most powerful and feared men. He was merciless in his quest of wealth and power, using force and threats to keep control of the city's criminal underworld. It was common for Capone to shoot dead his perceived actual enemies in the streets. The infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929, in which seven members of a rival gang were brutally slain, was one of the many high-profile killings in which Capone personally involved. The city's police department and local administration were both tainted by Capone. As a result, it was nearby impossible to persecute him. He was known for buying politicians and law enforcement authorities to ignore his criminal activity. Despite his wealth and power, Capone was eventually brought down by the law. He was found guilty of income tax evasion in 1931 and given an 11-year prison term. He was imprisoned in Alcatraz, a maximum security facility on an island off the California coast. As he was imprisoned, Capone's health deteriorated. He complained of severe headaches, forgetfulness, and memory loss. He was frequently angry and had mood swings, which caused his relocation to a medical center for therapy. Capone was diagnosed by medical professionals at the prison with nerve syphilis, a severe form of syphilis that impacts the nerve system. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection brought on by bacterium. Because of the disease, Capone was finally released on a parole in 1939. It was believed that he had contracted syphilis in his early 20s and never sought medical attention. 
despite having treatment already for the disease. This brain and neurological system had already suffered major harm by the time neurosyphilis was discovered in him. It is true that by the time Capone was residing in his Miami mansion, his health had considerably worsened. While in Miami, Capone was being watched by the FBI. They were more focused on obtaining proof of his involvement in criminal activity than his personal finances. He remained unwell for the remainder of his life. He suffered a heart attack in 1947 and passed away at the age of 48. It was most likely a side effect of his advanced neurosyphilis. There are constant rumors that Al Capone stashed a large chunk of cash, approximately $100 million, in various places across the country. Nevertheless, this allegation is not supported with any actual evidence. Law enforcement authorities have conducted extensive investigations, but they have not been able to find any hidden money belonging to Al Capone. It's possible that any concealed money was found and taken by the criminal justice, or that it was never existed and it's just a story that has been passed down to generations. <laughs>